Chapter Twenty Three of Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue on Grandpa's Farm by Laura Lee Hope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nan Dodge. The Gypsies. Along the dusty road on the way to town walked Bunny Brown and his sister Sue. Hand in hand they toddled on, thinking of the fun they were going to have. They did not stop to think that they were running away to go to the circus, but that is just what they were doing. They had not asked their mother if they might go. They were pretty sure she would say they could not. Bunny and Sue did not mean to do wrong. They just did not think. They only wanted to have a good time. Do you suppose we'll really see elephants, Bunny? asked Sue. Of course we will. Like in the picture? Sure. With two tails and his big teeth sticking out like lollipop handles that Wango put in his mouth? Elephants like that? Yes, Sue. Only an elephant hasn't two tails. One end is his tail and the other is his trunk, his long nose that he breathes through and squirts water in. I told you about it. Yes, I know, Bunny, but I forgot. And are you going to give the elephant water to squirt in his trunk? Maybe, but I hope he doesn't squirt it on me. Or on me, added Sue. I'm going to water the ponies. They haven't any trunks, have they, Bunny? No. Oh, we'll have a good time, Sue. And will I get a red balloon? I don't know about that, Bunny Brown shook his head. The more he thought about the circus, the harder it seemed to be to get inside the tent. Suppose they wouldn't let him water the elephant. How was he going to get a ticket to the show, or one for Sue? Bunny was beginning to feel worried. That is, he didn't know just what he was going to do. But he would not give up yet. There were many persons going into town that day. Many of them were going to the circus, it seemed. Some wagons and carriages had many children in with the grown folks. At first Bunny and Sue thought it fun to walk along by themselves, but after a bit Sue began to get tired. It was hot and dusty, and the town was farther away than even Bunny had thought. Oh, Bunny, Sue cried at last, I want to ride. But how can you? asked the little boy. If you had brought Splash and the express wagon, we could have a nice ride. That's so, said Bunny slowly. He had not thought of that. He stood in the road and looked back toward Grandpa's house. Just then there were no wagons or carriages in the road. But Bunny saw a small cloud of dust coming toward him. Faster and faster it came. Then he heard a bark. Oh, Bunny, cried Sue, is that Splash? I, I don't know, began Bunny Brown. But in another second he saw that it was their big shaggy dog. Oh, it is Splash, cried Sue. I'm so glad he came. Now, if an elephant tries to bite us when you're watering it, Bunny, Splash will bite him. Elephants aren't afraid of dogs, said Bunny, but I'm glad you came, Splash. I wish he'd brought the express wagon and I could ride, said Sue, with a sigh. But that was too much to wish for. The two children had slipped away that morning without calling for Splash to go with them. Bunny thought if the dog came... Mother Brown might see, and ask Bunny and Sue where they were going, and of course they would have to tell. But Splash had come anyhow, and he could not be sent back. He barked happily and was very glad to be with the children once more. He would never have stayed home if he could have had his way about it. Well, come on, said Bunny after a bit. We don't want to be late for the circus, Sue. No, I want to see everything. Will they let Splash in too, Bunny? I guess so. They have trained dogs and circuses. But Splash isn't trained. He can draw us in the express wagon, Bunny reminded her. Yes, said Sue, and I wish we had it now. I'm awful tired. But you can sit down when we get in the circus, after I water the elephant. That seemed to make it all right, and once more the children went on, hand in hand, Splash now running on ahead, and sometimes trotting back. Pretty soon a wagon, drawn by a white horse, and driven by a fat, good-natured-looking man, came up from behind the children. 
The men looked down at Bunny and Sue and cried out, Whoa! He was talking to his horse, of course, and the horse stopped. So did Bunny and Sue. Want a ride? asked the fat man with a jolly laugh. Bunny and Sue wanted a ride very much, and they both said so. Get in, said the fat man, or wait a minute and I'll lift you in. You're too small to get up by yourselves. Is this your dog? Yes, answered Bunny, and please, could he ride too? He gets tired running along. Yes, he can get in too. I've plenty of room. Up you go, doggy. His name is Splash, said Sue, as the fat man lifted first her and then Bunny up into the wagon. Oh, Splash, eh? That's a good name. Well, up with you, Splash. Splash, seeing that Bunny and Sue were in the wagon, leaped in himself. Then off they went again. Sue was happy now. Where are you tots going? the fat man wanted to know. To the circus, said Bunny. I'm going to water the elephant. And I'm going to water the pony, added Sue. The fat man laughed. He seemed to be doing that most of the time. Well, you're pretty small to be going to a circus alone, went on the fat man, but I suppose your folks will meet you there. Don't get lost, that's all. Are you going to the circus? asked Bunny. No, indeed, laughed the fat man. I haven't time, but I'm going close to the circus grounds where the tents are. I'll let you off there. Thank you, said Bunny. He was glad he and Sue and Splash would not have to walk as he was also beginning to feel tired. "'Here you are, youngsters,' finally called the man, as the wagon went around a turn in the road. "'There are the circus grounds. You can get out here and walk straight ahead. But don't get lost. Where is your father or mother going to meet you?' Bunny did not answer that question, for, of course, mother or father did not know that the two children had gone to the circus at all. Bunny began to be a little worried, but the fat man did not ask any more questions. For just then, a band began to play music, and the horse wanted to hurry away. So the fat man helped Bunny and Sue out of the wagon and drove off with a wave of his big hand. Splash jumped out himself. Now we'll go over and see the circus, said Bunny. And oh, what a lot there was for him and Sue to look at. There were big white tents, and from the poles were flags of all colors fluttering in the wind. In another tent, the sides of which were raised up to let in the air, were many horses and ponies. In another tent there was a long table, on which were many dishes, and seated on benches were men and women eating at the table. "'Oh, look, Bunny!' suddenly cried Sue. "'There's your elephant!' Bunny looked and saw a big elephant pushing a large red wagon by putting his head against it while some men steered it. "'Are you going to water that elephant?' asked Sue. "'I, I don't know,' replied Bunny. Now that he saw how very big an elephant was, he began to think that, after all, perhaps he had better water just a pony, as Sue was going to do. "'When can we go in the circus, Bunny?' asked Sue as she heard the band playing again. It was not time for the show to begin. In fact, the parade had not yet started, but Bunny and Sue did not know this. The circus was just getting ready to have the parade. I want to go in and see the animals, went on Sue. Have to get a ticket first, said Bunny. I'll ask a man to let me water a pony. I guess an elephant is too big. And I'll water a pony too, Bunny. The elephant, pushing the big wagon, came close to where Bunny and Sue were standing. Splash barked at the elephant and ran back. So did Bunny and Sue. The elephant looked bigger than ever. A man carrying a long whip came hurrying up to the tent, where the horses and ponies were eating their hay. "'Please, mister,' cried Bunny, "'I want to go to the circus. So does my sister. We'll water the ponies if you give us a ticket.' The man looked at the two children. At first he looked cross, and then he smiled just as the fat man had done. No one could look cross for very long at Bunny Brown and his sister Sue. 
"'You're too little to water ponies or to go to circuses,' said the man with the whip. "'You had better go back home. I guess you're lost. I'll send a man to take you home.' Then he hurried off, cracking his whip. "'Oh, Bunny!' cried Sue. "'Did you hear what he said? He said he was going to send us home. Then we won't see the circus. Oh, dear!' "'Yes, we will see the circus,' cried Bunny. "'I'll ask another man. Come on, Sue. "'We'll stand in another place, and then he can't find us when he comes back.' Bunny went around to the other side of the horse tent, followed by his sister and Splash. It would be dreadful to be sent home now, just when the circus was ready to start. "'We'll ask someone else to let us water the ponies, "'and then they'll give us tickets to get in,' said Bunny." "'Take hold of my hand, Sue, and then you won't get lost.' As the two children stood there, they hardly knew what to do. All about them men were hurrying, here and there, some leading horses or camels. Bunny and Sue could hear music in the big tent, and as they stood there they saw two men coming along who did not look like those who belonged with a circus. The two men had gold rings in their ears, and the faces of the men were very dark. They had on coats with silver buttons and wore sashes around their waists. Each man was leading a horse, but the horses were not like circus horses. "'Oh, Bunny!' cried Sue. "'Look! Those are gypsies, like the ones we saw in the woods.' "'Yes!' cried Bunny. "'And they have two horses. Maybe those are Grandpa's horses. Oh, Sue, suppose they should be!' Maybe we've found them. Maybe we've found the gypsies who took Grandpa's horses and didn't bring them back. End of chapter 23、chapter、24 of Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue on Grandpa's Farm by Laura Lee Hope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nan Dodge. Bunny and Sue are sad. Bunny and Sue watched the two gypsy men closely. The children were sure the men were gypsies, for they looked just like those others the children had seen in the woods when the two youngsters wandered away on the first night of their automobile trip. The two men with their bright red sashes and the gold rings in their ears stood together. Each one had hold of the halter of a horse he was leading. And the horses did not seem to be the kind that belonged in a circus, for they pranced about and did not like to hear the music, nor did they like the sight of the elephants and camels that were now walking about getting ready for the parade. Do you suppose they could be Grandpa's horses? asked Sue of her brother. Maybe, said Bunny. What did the gypsy men bring them here for? Sue wanted to know. Maybe they want to train them to be circus horses. Or maybe they want to sell them, Bunny answered. We ought to go tell Grandpa, declared Sue. Then he could come and get his team. He wants it awful much. We can tell him after the circus, Bunny said. We want to see the show, Sue. Yes, and I want a red balloon or maybe a blue one. Which goes up the highest, Bunny? For just then a man walked past with many balloons, blue, red, green, and yellow, floating in the air. "'Oh, I guess they all go up the same, Sue,' said Bunny. The little boy was thinking hard. Suppose these should be his grandfather's horses that the gypsy men had. How could Bunny get them? It seemed too hard for the little boy to do. Then, too, Bunny wanted to take Sue in to see the circus. That was what they had come for. But how could he get in when he had no money? And now that he had seen an elephant close by— he did not feel like carrying water to one of the big animals. Suppose one of them should accidentally step on Bunny Brown. The little boy looked around for someone to whom he could speak. He wanted to ask about getting into the show, and he wanted to talk about his grandfather's horses and the gypsies. But everyone seemed to be too busy to stop to speak to the two children all alone on the circus grounds. Watching the two gypsies with the horses, Bunny and Sue saw the men talk to some of the circus people. The gypsies pointed to the horses several times. 
and Bunny and Sue felt sure that the men with the red sashes and the gold rings in their ears were trying either to sell the horses or have them trained to become circus animals. Oh, look, Bunny, Sue suddenly cried. The circus is starting. From one of the tents came a long line of elephants, camels, and horses. On the backs of the animals were men and women who wore red, green, blue, yellow, pink, and purple clothing, which sparkled in the sunshine as if covered with diamonds like the one in Aunt Lou's ring. "'That's the parade,' said Bunny. "'That isn't the circus. That's in the tent. Oh, I wish I could find a man to give us a ticket, or some money for watering the ponies.' Bunny looked all around, but he saw no one whom he could ask. Everyone seemed to be looking at the parade, which was to march through the streets of the town and then back to the circus grounds. Even the gypsy man with the horses that Bunny and Sue thought might be those belonging to their grandfather were watching the parade. Come on, cried Bunny. We'll look at it, too. We can go to the circus later. Come on, Sue. They found a good place where they could watch the start of the parade. They saw the horses, elephants, and camels. They saw the cages of lions and tigers and even bears. And they saw the big steam piano playing its funny tooting tunes rumbling along. The steam piano was the last thing in the parade. Now we'll go and see if we can find someone to let us in the show, said Bunny, when the gay procession had passed. I got five cents, Bunny. Can't I have some peanuts or or pink lemonade? Why, why, I guess so, said the little boy. I got five cents, too. I'll tell you what we can do, Sue. You buy five cents worth of peanuts and give me half. I'll buy a glass of pink lemonade and give you half. We can get two straws. You can drink half and I'll drink half. All right, Bunny, only you mustn't drink faster than I do, because I'm awful thirsty. I'll let you drink more than half then, Sue. The children bought the peanuts and lemonade, and when they had finished drinking the red lemonade through two straws and were chewing the peanuts, they saw one of the circus men with a long whip come up to the two gypsies with the horses. What was said, Bunny and Sue could not hear, but they saw the circus man walk off, while the two gypsies leading their horses went after him. Oh, Sue, exclaimed Bunny, there go Grandpa's horses. Well, when we go home, we can tell him they are here in the circus and he can come after them, Bunny. Now I want to go in and see the animals. But Bunny Brown and his sister Sue were not to go to the circus right away. Just as Bunny was going up to another circus man he saw to ask him how he could get a ticket to the show, a voice cried, Well, if there aren't those brown children and all alone, too. They must be lost. We must take them home. Bunny and Sue looked up to see Mr. and Mrs. Kendall, who lived on the farm next to Grandpa Brown, standing near. Bunny Brown, how did you get here? asked Mrs. Kendall. We walked, said Bunny. We're going to see the show. A fat man gave us a ride and splash, too, said Sue, as she patted her dog's head. Bunny was going to water the elephant, but he's too big. I mean, the elephant is too big. So we're going to water the ponies, and then we're going in the circus. Bless your hearts, cried Mrs. Kendall. Does your mother know you came here? Well, uh, maybe, said Bunny. But we didn't have time to tell her. They ran away, that's what they did, said the farmer. Their folks will be wild about them. I'd better take them home. Bunny Brown and his sister Sue felt sad when they heard this. But we don't want to go home, said Bunny. We want to see the circus, cried Sue. I know, my dear, explained Mrs. Kendall kindly, but your family don't know where you are, and they will worry and be frightened. We will take you home, and perhaps your folks will bring you back to see the circus. You can't go in alone, anyhow. Sue's eyes filled with tears. Bunny wanted to cry, but he did not like to. Someone might see him. And we... We found Grandpa's horses, too, Sue went on. 
"'What's that?' cried Mr. Kendall. "'You found the horses the gypsies took? Where are they?' "'They're gone now,' said Bunny, and he told what he and Sue had seen. "'Oh, well, maybe they weren't the same gypsies, or the same horses at all,' Mrs. Kendall said. "'These children guess at lots of things,' she told her husband. "'Yes,' he answered, "'but I'll just about have time to drive them home and come back to see the circus myself.' "'I'll come with you,' said his wife. "'Their mother is probably looking for them now. "'Come, Bunny, Sue, you'll ride home with us.' "'Then we can't see the circus,' cried Sue, "'tears falling from her brown eyes. "'Maybe you can tomorrow,' suggested Mrs. Kendall. "'The circus will be here two days.' "'That's good,' said Bunny. "'He and Sue did not feel so sad now, "'but they were a little disappointed.' Mrs. Kendall took them to where her husband's wagon was standing in the shade, with the horse eating oats from a bag. Into the wagon the children were lifted. Splash jumped up all by himself, and then they were driven back to Grandpa's farm, leaving the circus with its big white tents, the fluttering flags, the jolly music, the elephants, camels, and horses far behind. We'll tell Grandpa about the gypsies and his horses, said Bunny. Yes, said Sue, and then maybe he'll bring us back to the show. End of chapter 24「Chapter 25 of Bunny Brown and his sister Sue on Grandpa's Farm by Laura Lee Hope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nan Dodge Grandpa's Horses "'Well, well, you children do the queerest things,' cried Grandpa Brown, when Mr. and Mrs. Kendall drove up to the farmhouse, with Bunny Brown and his sister Sue in the wagon, Splash standing up in the back, and barking as though he had done it all. "'Yes, you certainly do queer things. The idea of running off to a circus.' We, we didn't run. We walked, corrected Sue. And we saw the elephants, but I didn't water any, said Bunny. Oh, I was so worried about you, cried Mrs. Brown, as she put her arms around Bunny and Sue. Why did you do it? We, we wanted to see the circus, said Bunny. And oh, we saw Grandpa's horses, cried Sue. Two gypsy mans had them. Everyone looked surprised on hearing this. "'What's that? What's that?' cried Grandpa Brown. "'You saw my two horses that the gypsies borrowed and didn't bring back?' "'Yes, we saw them,' said Bunny. "'Anyhow, they looked like your horses, because they weren't circus horses.' "'What about this, Mr. Kendall?' asked Grandpa Brown, of the kind farmer who had brought Bunny and Sue home. "'I don't know anything about it,' was the answer. "'My wife and I went to the circus.' And when we were standing around waiting for the show to begin, we saw these tots there. They were all alone, so we knew something must be wrong. They told us they'd run away, and we brought them back. But I didn't see your horses, though I did see two gypsy men hanging around one of the tents. Grandpa Brown thought for a few seconds. Then he said, Well, it might be that the gypsies came back with my team and are trying to sell them to the circus. I guess I'd better go over and see about it. You can ride back with us, said Mr. Kendall. My wife and I are going right back to the circus. Oh, can't we go, cried Bunny. Please, begged Sue. Not this time, my dears, said Mother Brown. But if all goes well, you shall go tomorrow when Daddy comes back. The circus will be here for two days. Bunny and Sue were glad to hear this. Grandpa Brown rode off with Mr. and Mrs. Kendall, and Bunny and Sue were given a good dinner and put to sleep that afternoon, for they were tired, sleepy, and hungry. It was late in the afternoon when Bunny and Sue awoke. They went out on the porch, and the first thing they saw was Grandpa Brown coming down the road, riding on one horse and leading another which trotted by the side of the first. "'Oh, look!' cried Bunny. Grandpa did get his horses back from the gypsies. "'That's just what I did, little man,' cried Grandpa Brown as he rode up the drive. 
Those were my horses you saw the gypsy men have, though of course you only guessed it. Are they really yours? asked Mother Brown. Yes, the same ones the gypsies took. If it had not been for Bunny and Sue, I might never have gotten them back. I thought we'd find them, cried Bunny. We found Aunt Lou's diamond ring, and now we have found Grandpa's horses. Good luck, cried Sue, clapping her hands. And the horses did really belong to Grandpa Brown. He told how he got them back. The gypsy man who borrowed my team just before you folks came to the farm, Grandpa said to Bunny, Sue, and Mother Brown, that gypsy man really meant to bring my horses back when he got through with them, but he was taken ill. Then some of the bad gypsies in the tribe ran away with the team. They took them far off and kept them. Where they went, I don't know, but today they came back, and seeing the circus, the gypsies thought they could sell my horses, to do tricks, maybe, though I never trained them to do any more than pull a plow or wagon. Anyhow, when I got to the circus, I found one of the circus men was just going to buy my horses from the gypsies. I told him the team was mine, and that the gypsies had no right to sell it to him. The gypsies ran away when they saw me, and the circus man gave me my horses, so I have them back. But if Bunny and Sue had not gone to the circus, I would never have known about my horses. And did you see the elephants? asked Sue. No, I didn't have time to look at them, said her grandfather with a laugh. I was too glad to get my horses back. I, I wish we could go to the circus, begged Bunny. So you shall, tomorrow, cried Grandpa Brown. My goodness, you certainly shall go. You must have a reward for finding my horses for me, so I'll take you and Sue and everybody to the circus tomorrow. We'll all go and have a good time. Will you take Bunker Blue, asked Bunny. Yes, Bunker shall go. And can I get a blue balloon, Sue wanted to know. Yes, or a red or green or yellow one. And me too, asked Bunny. Of course. And can we have peanuts and more pink lemonade, cause it was awfully good? And can we feed the elephants? And, and, Sue had to stop, for she was all out of breath. You can have the best time ever, cried Grandpa Brown, giving her a hug and a kiss. Oh, 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 cried Sue, and that was all she could say she felt so happy. Bunny was happy, too, and a little later he and Sue went out to the barn to see Grandpa's team of horses the gypsies had taken, but which were now safe in their stalls. Of course, Papa Brown was surprised when he came to the farm the next day and heard that Bunny and Sue had found Grandpa's horses for him. My, such children, he cried, but I think he was proud of them just the same. Oh, Bunker, we're going to the circus, cried Sue, and you're going, too. And so am I, shouted Bunny, and maybe we'll get up a circus of our own, Sue. Oh, will we? Maybe. And what sort of show the two children gave, you may read about in the next book of this series, which will be called Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue Playing Circus. In a big farm wagon, the children... Mr. and Mrs. Brown, Grandpa and Grandma Brown, and Bunker Blue went to the big circus on the baseball grounds. Bunny and Sue saw the elephants, the camels, the lions, and the tigers. And the children did not have to carry water to get in to see the show, for Grandpa Brown bought tickets for them. Bunny and Sue sat looking at the men and women turn somersaults in the air, and fall down safely into the big nets. They saw the races, when monkeys rode on the backs of ponies and dogs. They saw the cages of wild animals, and they fed the elephants peanuts by the bagful. Oh, Bunny, Bunny, cried Sue, when they came out, each carrying a toy balloon. Wasn't the circus wonderful? Fine, cried Bunny Brown, but you just wait until we get up our circus. That will be better yet, and we will all wait and see what happened. End of chapter 25 Recording by Nan Dodge End of Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue on Grandpa's Farm
by Laura Lee Hope.